Is it Frog uh, yeah. or Jim? Did you play volleyball? Yeah. Okay, I'd like to call our meeting to order. First, I'd like to welcome those watching the home on G10. Uh, first order of business is approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. 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 Any discussion? None. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we'll move on with the approval of the minutes. Did y'all get a chance to look at these? Amanda sent those out by email and there's a copy in front of you. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? Any corrections? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, director's report. Michael, Susan. I'll go ahead and start us off. Um, so since we last seen each other, some of the things I'm gonna highlight about eight or nine or 10 things, uh, what we've been doing over the last couple months, uh, again, and what we'll be doing moving forward. So if you come down the parkway in the last couple of days, uh, maybe towards the commons, maybe you've noticed us in the middle of the road, we are taking the mulch out and transferring uh, rock into its place. Again, this is another one of the uh, efficiency things we're trying to do. Uh, we won't ever have to replace the rock. Uh, where we do have to replace mulch on a yearly basis. So it's, uh, and it actually looks, it looks pretty good uh, as you're first uh, coming towards uh, Western Boulevard. Uh, when you, when the road narrows a little bit, you'll see some of that. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of places around uh, uh, Huff Drive and uh, the Parkway and hopefully eventually 17 as well as uh, the landing. So just be aware of that. Uh, we have replaced some uh, slides over at Richard Ray and the Commons, so just be aware of that. Um, I think the last time we met, I had said to you all of our Christmas decorations were out, or getting ready to be finally put out. They are now all back where they were before we met. We will wait until next year to put them back out again. Hopefully you had a chance to enjoy uh, what we did this year. Uh, we had over 250 um, uh, decorations, uh, palm decorations, and we also added some uh, uh, neat little things down at Winterfest, uh, the Snoopy and the reindeer and um, um, the snowman, obviously. So if you didn't get a chance to see them, uh, and I hope you enjoyed our tree this year. Um, uh, from a staff perspective right now, we're working on uh, uh, the ball fields. Uh, getting them prepared for uh, ball season, obviously. Ball season is is literally right around the corner. Yeah. It is right around the corner. And if ball season is right around the corner, what else is right around the corner? Mowing. The mowing is literally right around the corner. Matter of fact, I think a week and a half ago, we were out mowing. Uh, not necessarily grass, but weeds were popping up everywhere. It's, we, had to, we had to get our mowers out and, and and clean some areas up. It's just, it's a fact of life here in Eastern North Carolina. Uh, in January, sometimes it gets as high as 70 degrees. And uh, when that happens, we have to respond to that. Some uh, exciting news, uh, <coughs> Georgetown Park. We've met with our uh, engineering group and through uh, community development, we are and we've talked about this a little bit, but our restroom facility is on schedule. It's been bid out, and uh, it is on schedule to be uh, uh, usable, workable, uh, however term we want to uh, complete it before May. So uh, we're excited about that. Georgetown Park will, will get a, a, another uh, 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 uptick in its park, and its presence over there will look a little bit better. Uh, those bathrooms are serviceable but make no doubt they are old and uh, these will be in the model that you see currently at Wooten Park and Jack Amiet and the marina and the ones at Northeast Creek same type of model bathroom <coughs> so uh, that is our standard and just be aware of that um, uh, our budget just so you're aware we have started uh, for, uh, from Parkside we have compiled our budget. We do start meeting in the next couple of days with uh, uh, our liaisons from finance to start going over our budget. And then obviously in the next couple of weeks, we'll be meeting with the management team about our budget, where we're at, what our requests are. I will tell you that from a parks perspective, we are pretty much towing the line on the operational budget. We are, uh, I don't believe we're going up at all. I know we're not, uh, but we are towing the line at the number we uh, 
what we're able to utilize this year. Uh, so we aren't asking for any increases. But what that does mean is we do reallocate some of the money in our, in our lines and move it around where maybe we want some focus uh, to be a little bit more in one area than we did last year. So we do have that luxury and, and there we'll try and take advantage of that as uh, uh, the manager and council sees fit. Um, so if you haven't been by the, and this is what I'll close with, if you haven't been by uh, the commons and it's more specifically the park maintenance building, we've had some challenges over the last two or three years with our facility. And um, when we moved in that facility in 07, I believe we had 13 people and we maybe had, you know, three or four staff members and we maintained parks three or four temporary staff members, I apologize. We only maintained parks at that time. Obviously, times have changed. We now have a full-time staff of 26. We get as many as 15 temps, maybe a little higher than that, depending on the availability. Uh, we also maintain more than parks. We are out of space over there from a footprint perspective. Uh, we have enlarged some of that uh, land over there. We haven't done anything to it but clear it. The hope and intention is that as uh, time goes by, we'll be able to go one step at a time and uh, fence that area in and connect it to our existing area. And things like ball field clay and, and rock and uh, brick chips, which are brick chips, whether they're for landscaping or the brick track that we use on the ball fields, those sorts of things that we buy in bulk literally in massive bulk and there's an advantage to doing that why because it's obviously it's a lot cheaper to do we'll have a uh, space now to store those things and be able to respond to the needs of our community a little bit better uh, by expanding that footprint and that's it from the park side okay uh well my turn uh thank you again for coming back out and seeing <coughs> us i know we just met Thank you so much for coming out to our special requested meeting that we had week before last. It was really wonderful to have all of you available to come out and give us your input as, uh, in reference to Jack Emmett. So just an update from that meeting. We did uh, present to council last Tuesday, and it was the two options, uh, the one with the multi-purpose space and then one with the gym. So we did get authorization from council to move forward with John Sawyer, an architect, to come up with concept plans, look at some logistics and a uh, cost estimate. So we have uh, ideally a timeline of April to go back to council. Hopefully we'll get something from Mr. Sawyer, you know, end of March to do that with. So you will be the first ones also to hear about that. We have a meeting uh, March 23rd. I don't know if I'll have anything for you then, but it should be fairly close. So we'll try to show you something at our next meeting. If not, maybe I'll just, you know, we'll send you some information. But the plan is to continue moving forward with this and keep getting, keeping it in front of council's, um, you know, uh, options and so that we can move forward. So thank you again for your input. It was really, it was, it was very, very valuable. Um, that also uh, was right before our first input meeting, which was, uh, we've held two so far. And it was, the first one was at the Commons and then the second one was last week at Jack and Yet. We had some good turnout. I appreciate uh, those of you that were able to make it out to those. It was, it was, I thought they were good turnouts for public input meetings. Uh, a couple of updates or just in case you weren't there and you didn't see, but obviously the timeline of the skate park closing um, really prompted a very big public response from that population. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> it was good. it was nice. You know what I mean. They're very they're they're definitely <coughs> acting as advocates and a voice for what they believe in. So it that's very much you know they're organized. They are they very are. organized. They they're very organized, and we had a lot of the same reoccurring uh, folks that came to the first one came to the second one, and we had them coming right up until the timeline as far as the. The, okay, we're we're about done, and you know, one gentleman said, "Oh, I'm texting my friend. He's on his way. He's on his way." So, uh, that said, we did get really good feedback on the uh, parks master plan. So I'm not ready to put it out because we just compiled it. Uh, it was good feedback. A lot of it from the first meeting was geared towards the need for a skate park. They dominated the attendance, so they did put a lot of feedback for that. 
The second meeting last week was a little bit more diverse. We appreciated more community members. They also, I won't say they dominated the attendance on last week's meeting, but they certainly were a large contingent. So given that they want a skate park at every location, everywhere possible, and all of these options, we'll have to look through and, you know, just decide, you know, when we go about putting together our park master plans. Ideally, we're going to have each park, you know, with these master plans. And according to these folks, they, they, they do want one every <coughs> year. <laughs> I don't know that we're going to go for, you know, 10 <clears throat> skate parks. Um, so we'll see what that fleshes out to be. But it was really good. It was good feedback. It's always great to actually talk with our citizens. I enjoy it. I think they enjoy it as well. So it was, it was really nice. Any feedback? I know, um, Steve, you were there. Mr. Jackson, we appreciate you were at, at both of them as well. So anybody else? I know you came out to one. Any other comments or observations from those input meetings? Anybody like to think? Well, I was uh, the, the contention for the skateboard park actually had a long conversation with them and others have brought up the issue of safety you know now that we don't have a skateboard park where will kids and they will find a way i want to say kids the grown-ups too yeah and we really don't want ups. we don't want anybody down 17 or 24 skating or you know even an issue with the malls and other public uh, uh you know Business. Office businesses, thank you. They will make yeah. their own. They will. I, I've, they will I've encountered two or three. Uh, do it yourself, break your own neck. Mm -hmm. uh, over by them uh, across 17 from KFC at, by the movie company. There was one over there, and there used to be a uh, real estate office there next to American Dream Cakes on Grand Branch Road. Mm -hmm. Right. Had a very fancy skate park. Uh, so are we going to have to talk about this and figure out something along, you know, right. down the road, hopefully. Uh, one of the issues was, uh, it's a big liability issue for cities nowadays, and we just gotta figure out, uh, you know, if we could maybe get some partners out there or some, encourage others to uh, go in that direction. Uh, or Michael's a rich uncle. Be <laughs> <laughs> that rich uncle like that. for sure. So, uh, Skaters will find a way. They will find a way. So we and we we realize that. And also, um, I forgot the young lady's name, but she brought up uh, more accessible playgrounds. She was. It, she attended both. She, she, she attended both of them. Oh, she well. is awesome, man. She was talking about possible funding for these mm -hmm. things and what have you. So I look back at reaching out to her, and um, you know maybe. Or working with you guys and mm -hmm. community development to see what we can do moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So. I have a question. Sure. Um, could you check uh, and do a little research to see if any municipalities have uh, unsupervised scaled down skate parks? I'm, I'm just asking. And also, um, um, are there any indoor skate parks? So um, I know the answer for the most part, but I will follow back up. Most skate parks are unsupervised. We actually went unsupervised in July. Um, there is a statute for North Carolina that says you can be unsupervised. We changed our ordinance and we went unsupervised in July 1. So it was working out well, it was fine. Um, the real issue is the, the ramps themselves. Okay. Um, as far as the indoor, I don't know of any municipal indoor skate parks. Not to say that, that we don't have them maybe somewhere in the nation, but we've done quite a bit of benchmarking within the state and surrounding states just to see what price of concrete skate parks are going for. And um, they're, they're, they're expensive. Pricing, yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of the skaters didn't quite realize that. And unfortunately I had to tell them for the size of ours, which is not a large one, but not a small one, it would be no less than 300,000. There's one wow. uh, in Wilmington that's really popular and they all want like that one, it was 600,000. And there's one in Fayetteville is getting built and finished up in, in the next month or two. It's a million. Uh, we know that one of them passed a bond, one of them didn't pass a bond, one of them has partners, one of them doesn't. Um, I can tell you the one in like Wilmington, for example, 200 of that 600 was, you know, sponsorship, you know, other donations, other fundraising efforts, but 400 of it came from the city. And those are outdoor skate parks? Those are all outdoor skate parks. Those are all concrete, um, you know, very large with the bowls and the, you know, the different elements, but those are very large. The um, square footage 
ranged anywhere on Wilmington's. I want to say it was like twelve to fifteen thousand. The one in Fayetteville is about a twenty thousand square foot. Ours is about a ten thousand square foot. So, uh, if we were to replace that one with concrete, all brand new, beautiful, uh, it would be no less than three hundred. And that's with the going rate of concrete. So that was a little bit of an eye opener when skaters asked about, well, how much is it? We built the original skate park for about 115, 20, you know, 20 years ago. <clears throat> yeah. There's an option for Jack M yet. Forget the gym, forget the multi-purpose, move yeah. all that uh, skateboard <laughs> equipment inside where the sun doesn't heat it up. And uh, Well, we, I mean, we're open. We did keep the ramps. We do have them. If there is a building that, you know, maybe I was, you know, again, the rich uncle, or I was thinking maybe one of those skaters' some kind of canopy. father has a building, I don't know. But if somebody gave us a building, I don't know, we wouldn't be opposed to you looking at other options of doing an indoor court. Uh, we just don't have a building right now, um, you know, but that's certainly the reason why we kept the ramps. Mm -hmm. If there's ever an option to, again, the only issue is the ramps themselves. And, and are they hard to move? They are not easy. Okay. Well, and, I, I'm just I'm just saying that because just like just like we've taken um, the swimming pool issue and, and moved it out into a, like a partnership type thing, right. there might be somebody with a big building maybe. that's not doing anything with it right now, and maybe with some kind of an agreement we could move what we've Absolutely. got indoors, see how it works, and, and maybe convince somebody else, hey, there's money to be made here. Maybe they'll, you know, decide to do something else. I'm just kicking that out. Sure. Maybe yeah. there's somebody watching that takes your idea. I, we would certainly entertain <laughs> right. I can always think of empty buildings. The old yes. uh, fire station two. What? What's it doing these days? It's a training grounds for the. Oh, fire station two. The old one. Old oh, one. it's coming to us for recreation purposes. Okay. I don't think a skate park would fit in there because no. the bay is no. close no. enough. No. <laughs> no. 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 yeah. Pole's a good idea, but <laughs> yeah. it's nothing like that, but yeah. it's just too small. Too small. Yeah. It is pretty small. And, and the last thing I'll say is uh, don't necessarily think that a skate park would mean that nobody would ever take chances elsewhere because right, right after we opened this one, we had uh, someone witnessed a, a van pull up at a local school with, full of older people in their 20s. And with skateboards, and they decided they wanted to skate at the school instead of the skateboard park because at the school you went, you know, when it's closed, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Nobody will do anything. Isn't that something? Yeah. Well, we found interesting just in our observation is uh, what we found are the, those folks, and several of you talked to them and met them. Those are the guys that actually grew up on our skate park. Yeah. They were yeah. the ones that spent a lot of time when we had the high ramps, we had the you know the half pipe. Those folks, once we, just being honest, once those original ramps got damaged and we took them out, they got older and they've moved away. So they're not actually attending our current skate park because it doesn't have the high elements and they're not enjoying it. What I, what I enjoyed seeing and hearing from them is they still care about it, they still have passion for it, and they want to work for getting what they grew up with back in the community for the younger, for the next generation. So I think that's a really nice thing. It reminds me of like Jack Emiette and those folks that grew up in the gym and they want that back for the next generation. So it's, it's nice to see that. But a lot of those adults that came to the meeting are those kids because Melody knew them and she said, you know, from the ages of, you know, six to 15, now they're all in their young 20s working and they just, the idea of not having one. And I won't even discuss where some of them told me they were skating prior to the skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't come to ours anymore. No. None of them are coming to ours. Because they're, they're we, yeah. we don't have the same, it's not right. the same as what the challenge, the challenge, challenge is isn't there. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, what we have left in the park <clears throat> is very much the lower elements and the younger kids are the ones right. attending it. So. And it wasn't highly attended. In any case, that's enough about that. Um, some operations, just letting everybody know that uh, we are uh, going to be a week or two away from spring baseball registration. So 28th next week, next week spring baseball, softball, volleyball. So we'll be busy. Um, that's for all the kids to enjoy our outdoor and our indoor volleyball. So by all means. And that's 
pretty much it. Again, just working on our other stuff you're already aware of. So thank you again for all your support and your feedback. It's been very valuable. Any other questions for me before I hand it back over? Thank you, Mr. Spring, for your question. Okay. Council objection. Yes. Uh, just reiterate what uh, Susan mm -hmm. said. Thank you for showing up so in a in a hurry, mm -hmm. basically. You know, we know if anything comes down, we just send a signal out and you guys will show up. But we appreciate your uh, attendance at the, the special meeting. And um, also, I'd like to thank those out in TV land that came to show support and sh show up for the input meetings and give their, uh, you know, their, uh, you know, their um, feedback concerning this Jack Amiette as we go forth. And, um, you know, we'll wait for the next step, you know, but also, um, you could mention that, you know, others can still provide input. Absolutely. They can yeah. just let us know. Right. I think we also put that on right. social media. Right. Right. We did. You know, the value of having the posters and the stickies is that we get a real sense of their priority. Right. So we'll somehow try and articulate that into the feedback that they give us. But um, we can still ask that and get that feedback. So if anybody does want to right. give us continued feedback on what they'd like to see in the park system, they certainly can give us a call at the main phone number. Yeah. That's it. If anybody have any questions that I may be able to answer. All right. Thank you. Okay, Homer. Any advisory report? Uh, yes. Before I get into the advisory <clears throat> report, let me say that uh, I am again always impressed and, and thankful that Mr. Lane has been as active and as in, involved as as he has. I do appreciate that. We do we do appreciate it. We we don't always think of saying thank you, but we we do we appreciate your hard work. Oh. Oh, Jackson. Maybe it was Jackson. Sorry, Mr. Jackson. Jackson. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> reading another sign. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Okay. Wake up. Okay. Saw the sign right there. Saw the I knew sign. he was looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I was having an out of my experience. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you. I appreciate it. We do appreciate it. Um, from a planning board standpoint, the last meeting we spent uh, quite a bit of time talking, discussing uh, mobile homes. And uh, not necessarily mobile home parks, but the uh, ordinance in the UDO that lets us rebuild and replace mobile homes when they're already somewhere in the city or somewhere in the ETJ. And also we discussed uh, shrinking the ETJ because there's a point, there'll be a point in time when we really won't have much of an ETJ because we won't be able to do forced annexations. Um, it's kind of a, uh, interesting because I was doing some research on something with the church and I saw <laughs> So, uh, some residents back in the 60s angry about being annexed into the city. And uh, when they, when I saw the place where they live, I'm going like, that's right in the center of the city now. So, oh, wow. so it's amazing how things change. But um, that's what we did uh, last planning board. We discussed ETJ and uh, uh, a, a means of trying to help people that have a mobile home that is legal right now, but something happens to it or it gets old and they want to replace it. We want to give them the ability to replace it with a newer model or you know something legally without having to just get rid of it and having to put a, a regular house there. And I guess you you guys haven't met on that yet, have you? No. That's probably your next meeting. Yeah, I think there's an agenda, agenda. item yeah. for the next meeting. Yeah. And that's, that's it. That and thank you, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Any alibis before we go to uh, park reports? Okay, if not, uh, what were your first up? Uh, first up. Okay, so Richard Ray and the Commons looks good. I've noticed some, some traffic. The, the street opened up over to the new shopping center mm -hmm. back there. Um, I don't know if it, how it affects us over there, but I have noticed a lot of more traffic mm -hmm. going through there. Um, ball fields are looking good. There was an issue with trash, but I stopped one of the guys at Richard Ray, and he, he was on his way to go pick it up anyway, so that was good. Bathrooms are all good. Checking me it looks good. Um, I went over there walk in after our meeting last week just to see where we could put move the stuff around. So, I mean, we all have the snapshot of what's over there and you know what the community needs. So it's just a matter of what you can you fit in a box. Yeah. yeah. So. Do you have any further thoughts? I mean, no. It's I, interesting I, when you're on site. Yeah. Tell. I mean, it does. The park is used all the time i mean there's there's so many kids that play over in that park not just the ones that go to the after school or that area it's just the community uses it and uh like mr jackson um had, had mentioned before i mean that, that basketball unit it gets used regularly i mean i see more people playing basketball over there 
at the airports. Yeah, at, then yeah. At, the, at the commons at times. Uh, I mean, on weekends, I know there's some folks that go out there and they play pickup ball from all ages, you know, old, young, and, and toddlers sometimes. So, um, you know, who knows? It's just a matter of putting a square peg in a round hole, trying to figure it out, what we can put out there. So I know we all want to go big, but last time I checked, they don't have big money. <laughs> they have little money. But it was also mentioned to me by some kids that were out there playing outside that they would rather be playing inside. Yeah. Too, so. so. But it's well used. <laughs> Thank you. That's all, sir. Hey, um, Branchwood and Sherwood were both fine. Uh, Phillips Park, uh, is the water, are the water fountains turned off? No. Okay, because then the but water... But apparently they're not working. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if they're turned <laughs> off, they need to be turned off, because I was able to get a little bit of water gurgling, but not a much, not much out of the... Uh, Fountain at Phillips Park. Not, uh, not, not the on, on the concession stand? Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, other than that, I had no, no problems other than, you know, it needs oh, coat of paint. <laughs> we'll Real you. thick coat of paint, probably, to cover up some stuff. <coughs> we'll we'll give you some paint. Yeah. Needs a lot of paint. Yes, it does. <laughs> the Steve. men's side is not as pleasant as the women's side is. Let's just put it that way. Steve? Uh, Northeast Creek was extremely active this weekend. The weather was nice. Uh, the Society for Creative Acronism was out there in force. I think they had a tournament or something. Uh, on the playground side, the parking lot was completely full uh, between those guys and all the kids on the playground. It was just tons of kids out there. So it was uh, well used this weekend. Uh, a lot of people out there walking their dogs. Uh, we never did get the orange flower fixed on the splash pad last year. Any chance of having it fixed for this year? That's the goal. They just it didn't come in in time. So it's everything's shut down and winterized right now. So. Yeah, I know. It's just it never got fixed last year. So hopefully it'll be fixed for this year. So. Okay. And uh, over by the baseball fields, the uh, that little bitty fence. It's like. 18 inches high, it's uh, incurred some pretty good damage from the guys doing the ball field repair. Are you talking about on, on uh... It's by the parking lot. You, know, you keep people from driving onto the grass. Right, right, right. Yeah. On this side of the concession stand, not the far side of the concession stand. Yeah, closest to Corbett Street. Right. Yeah. But they're not done, so right. Yeah, and uh, oh, that that looked good. It's been very well used. Question. That's it. You said Society for Creative mm -hmm. Action. Is that the? What is that? Yes. They dress up in. Uh, they call it garb. They don't call it costumes. I was corrected on that once. Okay. And uh, and they have these foam swords and lances and like medieval. Okay. Yeah. Medieval. Yeah. Yeah. Like medieval like Renaissance. Times. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I didn't even, I've never heard of this. I have any. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they catch you off guard, though, if you ride off? by and you didn't expect it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> going on over there. Yeah. But they, they've been uh, using Northeast Creek forever. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen them do it. I just go out and use it. Very entertaining. That seems we have a group interesting. Who, we have a group cool. of them who have also inquired about being at the Jamboree this year and having a tent and under which they would. Them do demonstrations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank good. you. Yeah. Have them show up. <laughs> be educated. It's, a, it, it's interesting. My dog, I think, got some guy that shoots arrows with these big bean bags on the end. Mm -hmm. And my dog w wants to get that thing so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it for me. Kendrick? Yes, sir. Um, Georgetown Park. Um, it's. George, it's, it's still, I mean, it's been used. Um, I saw um, a couple of uh, people out using that that exercise um, Trail. track, and it's really, it's nice um, to have those different little machines along the track to use. Um, the only thing I was just, you know, I've, I've talked about it before, just maybe putting a little lighting out there, so maybe during the summer, um, or even during the winter months, it could be used um, in the evenings. 
Um, the basketball court, will, will it be resurfaced maybe? One I don't believe so. Uh, we uh, can talk with uh, Lily and Dr. Woodruff about that, but yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's still some kids. As of right now, now I, my last recollection is, no, I know the bathrooms were the priority okay. to get those done. Yeah. I'm not saying that they'll never be resurfaced, but I know the bathrooms were the quick But overall, priority. the park was clean, looked really good. Um, uh, Sturgeon City, it, it's always it's always nice. And, and there's always families out there using that, um, the equipment out there, the kids on the, um, the um, little spider thing or whatever. Playground. Like playground thing, yeah. They, they're always out there having a good time, so. That's it for me. Thank you. Joe? Hey, okay, so we have uh, Woodlands, Kerr Street, and Riverwalk. <laughs> I mean, for the most part, they're in great shape still. Um, new boat slipped down there, looks fantastic. Uh, people are always still walking their dogs or fishing off the pier at any time of day or night that I seem to go driving by there. Um, ball field is looking good. There's always parks and rec guys out there for the last several uh, days. It looks like they're starting to get everything geared up for the season. Um, as I said, it's always kept clean. It's an enjoyable place to hang out. A lot of people love that one little section of town, that little old section there, and they just uh, hang out. It's one of the easiest parks to review. So, yeah, I love it. <laughs> That's all I've got. Okay. Uh, Brook Valley, uh, I went through there Sunday after church, and there were at least two families and several dogs over there enjoying the park. And uh, the park itself was pretty much, I was actually doing a cleanup of the Powerline Trail. So I was talking to Michael about this before, and then the park itself was clean, but uh, there's some cedar trees on the north side of the park before you get to, uh, I think it's Valley Court is on the other side of that. There was some litter in there, and then down in that creek that runs along the west side of the park. I, I pulled a lot of stuff out of there. Uh, but it was being well utilized. Uh, Northwoods Rec Center, I stopped by there this evening. The after school program was in full swing. Uh, the attendant reported no problems. The only thing I noticed, uh, and it's probably been, in, in, been going on for months, is you know the front of the building is kind of a, a brick facade, looks very good. But the sides in the back is cinder brick that has been painted. Well, the paint is badly peeling off. I thought we were having a, a, a litter attack, and what it was, it wasn't litter. It was the chunks of paint that's peeling so off. So you're actually, uh, your timing is spot on because it's getting repainted. Okay. So you probably actually watched it get, you're in between it getting pressure washed. Because uh -huh. they were out there last week doing a pressure wash. So I imagine a lot came off. That may off. be what caused it. And uh, they should be out there this week working on painting it. I'm glad you, you, you confirmed that because, you know, some things, like I missed the meeting on the 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> on the 24th. <laughs> on the 24th. Uh, you know, I thought, wow, this has been going on for a while, but if it was just recently pressure, was pressure wash, that's probably why the big chunks were coming off. Yes. Okay, but other than that, they reported no problems at all. Uh, that's it for the park reports. One city moment. Yeah, um, I'll, uh, I have two updates I just thought about, and I apologize I didn't think about them earlier. But I want to let you know that the marina is is um, hopefully on the horizon of being done. The deadline is the end of February. So, um, Mr. Spranza, hopefully you'll see more people enjoying the marina in its full glory with boats and everything else and benches and, you know, that landscaped area um, by April, May, June, July, the whole nine yards. Um, and then the other one, I, I did want to follow up and let you know that as soon as we did take those ramps out of the skate park, we had requests from users to use that open cement area. So we have uh, futsal or indoor soccer teams practicing on it. And from the input meeting, the roller derby lady, wow. do you remember her? She was there. Yeah. She's actually reached out to us and has scheduled some practice for roller derby because it's cement and it works better for skates as opposed to asphalt. So, uh, at least if there's an upside, at least it's getting repurposed and it is being used for citizens to do something with it. But I just thought I'd let you know that uh, we got some good, that was another good thing that came from the public input meeting was the ladies that came and they were- Any liability issues for that? <laughs> <laughs> and they have insurance. They're an organized team, an organized sport that plays, so. Susan, uh, any update the uh, extension of the uh, bike pedestrian path from the Rusty Bridge? Down in the <laughs> I know I was holding that up, and uh, two or three months ago, there was some activity down there at Wilson Gate. The tunnel goes through there. It looked like they were putting a French drain or something. They're working on it. It's still not finished, but yes. Yeah, so. 
Bottom line is the base is responsible for that to get it fixed. And, and yes, we are a little bit at their mercy yeah. when you saw them out there, I believe just after the beginning of the new year, mm -hmm. uh, the expectation was two weeks. I would tell you that I hope I can report in March that to, to be continued. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I hope I can. It's been a long. Yeah, it's been a long <laughs> it's, it's it has been a very long process. Yeah. You so know, the dedication yeah. is a work in progress. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's been unfortunately, but. It's, oh, uh, the one city moment is just some pictures from the input meetings, I believe. Um, again, I think we've just mentioned that we really appreciated the citizens that came out um, and gave us their feedback. It's certainly going to be valuable for us moving forward. Uh, both were attended. Both had good feedback. Oh, that lady on the left is this roller derby lady. Okay. <laughs> and so, yeah, that was really pretty much it. Hey, there you go. Hey, there you go. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> we all know. <laughs> 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 Mr. Lane. Oh, Thanks a lot. Okay, any uh, last comments or questions? If not, the uh, next meeting will be here on the 23rd of March. And do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 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 Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Want to stay any longer? No. Okay. Meeting's adjourned. Good. Thank you. Thanks again for your.